Hello, I'm Pumlani Babela, aka the self-styled street artist. Yeah, you need to say the whole thing, the self-styled street artist. Welcome to my second video of my Blender tutorial series. We are going to discuss the Blender user interface. The Blender UI, It's let me s create a new file. Okay, the Blender UI is very intimidating, it's complex and sophisticated but we're gonna learn it um, by example as we go along so do not be alarmed what I'll do in this um, tutorial um, I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of the UI and, and the keys okay the first thing we need to do is to turn on screencast the feature is under user preferences we can also go there using the file option and the shortcut to that is control alt u so go user preferences and then we go to this option add on click 3d view and then there's this option right here make sure it's on 3d view screencast keys the reason why we want to do this this it's because um when when we modeling pressing keys moving the mouse clicking the mouse we want to see which buttons we click so there's going to be a panel here that's going to show us where which keys were activated and then after you press n you click on this button start display and then we're going to move this sh shelf away by pressing N. If you notice on the right, um, on the left hand side in the corner here, whenever we do s stuff, it'll display which key was pressed. So now I'm going to highlight um, the tube. That was a left mouse click. And so forth. Okay, let's move that shelf away. Uh, Blender this is the blender main um, panel I can't really say it's the main panel but that's the main menu for files and, and so forth this function it's used for creating okay this is self-explanatory I, I hope and then um, this function is used to add objects and meshes okay blender is a concept of an object and a mesh will will discuss the differences later on and um, it has different types of engines one two three the blender the game the cycles for this tutorial we're gonna do the blender the game and the render will will, will um, make use of it later on within the series and then with the outliner here Okay, by default, when you open a new file or open Blender, you'll get this tube and this object, which is the lamp, a light source, and then the camera. And then there'll be, um, you can change the names here if you want. Lamp. So you can change the object names there. cool and also um this view it's it's program it's um you can change it. it's not really cast on stone a lot of things are configurable like i can change this panel here to be a 3d view but i'll change it back basically what i'm trying to highlight here is you can change it you can change this ui and customize it to your needs or to your look and feel if you want it to resemble something else but anyways we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep it like this by default I'll urge you to also keep yours um, <coughs> in the default mode so that we have the same look and feel okay you will notice here there's um, three icons the eye the eye it means um, 
you gonna it's it's not gonna be visible here's the lamp if if I if I uncheck it if I click it it's you're gonna see it's gonna be disabled or grayed out and and that artifact is gonna disappear from the screen the same goes for the camera the same goes for any artifact you you put in this um, in this window on the 3d view now another thing um, another uh, option that's worth mentioning is the camera if I uncheck this camera this means when I'm in camera mode wh when I'm rendering this thing I won't be able to see the cube because I've deselected it it won't be visible to the camera but if I check it back it is visible to the camera so that's another thing um, if your things um, objects disappear the first thing you need to check it's uh, if it's still in this um, scene if it's in the scene you check if these um, icons are activated okay anyways that is the outliner these are the options okay, there's a lot of things um, happening I think I might as well finish with this part because uh, it's a lot more involved compared to other panels this is your timeline we're going to learn about this later on um, okay, let's discuss the keyboard quickly some laptops they have a keyboard similar to this they don't have a number keypad here a number pad like n normal desktops so um, and some mouses they don't have mouse sorry <laughs> some mouse uh, they don't have uh, the middle uh, what do they call it Shit. the middle button they don't have the middle button so you want to emulate that so we go to we go to user preferences input and then if you do not have okay maybe I need to get a laptop with a numpad here's a laptop with a number pad nice here's a number pad here and then this one doesn't have a number pad here this one has a number pad which is fine now let's go back to blender now if you if you do not have a number pad so if you have a laptop that is similar to with a keyboard similar to this one there's no number pad you might want to make use of this feature emulate number pad so if you check this in this means now your these keys one two to zero they're gonna behave like these keys okay but by default these keys they point to layers but if you emulate this this is how I suggest um, sorry okay sorry about that by default oh, by, by default these numbers they point to layers so that will be layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 and so forth they point to layers but if you use this option if you make use emulate numpad these keys they're gonna have the same behavior as these keys but we're gonna discuss these keys in a minute and then we have this emulate three button mouse in case you don't have a three button mouse but most mouse today mice today they have three button they have three buttons but if you don't have that you can emulate that and then the middle mouse action you're gonna emulate it using alt left 
Gotcha. Capish. Okay, cool. Let me do that. I don't want that because my keyboard has got um I've got a number pad on my keyboard. Okay, l let's assume now these things. Okay, let me show you how to um in case your artifacts they go missing or you delete them by mistake, you can always bring them back. Now I've pressed A. I've pressed A to select everything. Press A to deselect everything. A to select everything. Delete. Okay, I've deleted everything. Now I want to bring back the artifacts we deleted. Shift A or you can go and mesh. Add mesh or shift A. I prefer shift A. Shift A add cube. We've got the cube. And then shift C to put the cursor in the center. There. Cursor is in the center and then shift add. We add a lamp. Which type of a lamp? Let's add a sun. We'll discuss this the 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 lamp types later on when we do lighting. Now we need a camera. The camera right there. Where's the camera? What's well, behind this tube? I guess. Cool. So we've managed to bring back our artifacts. Okay, this is a tool um, shelf. You can put it away using T. If you press T, you can bring it back. It's got a set of tools that pertain to the objects, usually the objects selected or objects selected. Then if you press N, you've got another shelf here for attributes. These are properties that pertain to, for instance, screencast um, it's not really related to the objects in the context environment in the meshes it's actually it's it's a it's a feature that's related to the window okay we've discussed the timeline um okay th this part we gonna i'm gonna do it in the next tutorial when we are doing in the next tutorial we're gonna model a vase and then I'll explain in detail what what happens here because we're going to interact a lot with this panel here, the panel at the bottom. This is the timeline. We're going to learn about this later on also. I want, I'm trying to keep this tutorial simple. Okay, we have this uh, part, the properties part. If you want to render an image or whatever um, 3D model you want to render, you'll click this button. And then animation and play this pertain to modeling moving things okay we have the world the world is everything else the surrounding so if you want to create a picture where you've got artifacts and the background it's black you're gonna change you're gonna do that change in the world we have the modifiers this is also quite involved the modifiers there's a lot of modifiers you can use um i try to think i've got a strong java background so i, I always think of modifiers as functions functions that you apply to um to a mesh Th they are stack based so you can have multiple functions. The output of one function or modifier will be fed to the next modifier and so forth. Normally I usually start my mesh with small I usually start uh, with a mesh that has small faces small number of faces and then um, increase the faces using a subserve modifier. The materials, this is where we define materials for our objects this is where we define textures for our objects. We're also going to do textures and material later on. I think materials, we're going to do them in the next tutorial. Particles, the particle system. You use this if you want to simulate rubble. 
um, water or anything that's moving stars things like that and the physics used for smoke simulation fluid simulation and so forth we'll also do an, a tutorial on on water simulation mm, what else I'm missing I think that's about it stay tuned for the next tutorial um, but don't worry about don't worry too much about the user interface we're gonna learn it we're gonna learn as we go okay that's it stay put for the next tutorial we're gonna model a vase thank you for watching